So in the second part today, uh, we are going to talk about how to design a query in MongoDB. Um, to do that, I prepared some data set first. So the data set is prepared at the Blackboard. So you may go to the Blackboard and you can download these two files. So there are two files uh, on the Blackboard. So let me show you. Um, here, here is Blackboard. And if you scroll down, so yeah, on the course content. So I upload everything on the course content. So if you scroll down to the bottom, uh, there are two files here, gips nyil.javascript file and gips txca.javascript file. So you can right click on it and there's a save link, save link the content as option for me. So you can find something like this and you can click this and you can download it into uh, desktop or yeah, on your PC basically. So I already downloaded it, gips nyil.js and gips txca.js. So download these two JavaScript file on your PC first. So after you download it, uh, what we are going to do is that we are going to open this JavaScript file on MongoDB and we will simply uh, perform these two course so that uh, the database that we are going to use today will be prepared on the MongoDB. So after downloading it, let's go back to the MongoDB here, Robosity. And what we are going to do here is this. So we are going to, um, uh, basically we want to make a new collection inside the test IA database server. So in our database server, we have a test IA database. And inside here, let's just say that we want to create a new collection. Then uh, simply right click on the database here, test IA, and let's click open share. Uh, yeah, this is tab is also in the slide. So let me put the slide here. Yeah, okay. So right click on the test IA database and let's click open share so that we can open the share here. And when we perform the JavaScript code here, it can be performed on test IA database basically. And here, uh, to open JavaScript file, uh, you can go to yeah, you can click this uh, this uh, one. Yeah, on the top left corner, there's this uh, open uh, load script icon here, load script from fire. So you can click this and you can find the file you just downloaded from the Blackboard. The first one is gips nyir.js. So click to select this file and click open. And basically, uh, this JavaScript code is adding multiple documents into CD collection. So load this file and simply click this play icon on the top to perform this JavaScript file. So if I click this, it will be performed. And that's it. And do the same thing for another file. So right click on the test IA database, click open share, and click this open file icon and load the second file, which is gypsytxca.js and open and click the play icon again to perform this code. And let me close. And then right click on the local DB and click refresh and open test IA database and open collection. Then now I see that the CD collection is created in my MongoDB. So let's prepare uh, data like this. So basically, yeah, the steps are here so you can follow it to prepare the data set, which is a CD collection. So these two JavaScript file contain information about zip codes across the different cities in four major states in the US. And the major states are this NY, New York, IL, Illinois, TX, Texas, and CA, California. So for across these four states, uh, it contains zip code information. 
And to see how the data is uh, uh, structured, uh, we can use this uh, operation. So we can open share and we can type this code to retrieve one document from the collection and we can examine how uh, the document is structured. So to do that, uh, simply you may right click on the test site database and click open share. And here I can type db database dot cd collection name, which is a cd. And we can use a find one function. And if I perform this code, yeah, one, the first document from the cd collection will be shown here. And if I open it, you will see what kind of a field is inside each document of this uh, collection. So if I talk briefly, basically, uh, every document in this CD collection has this kind of a field. So it has a here ID field. So ID is currently the zip code, basically. So it has a zip code as ID. And here's a CD field, which is the name of the CD, like this. It has a location field as a list of two uh, values. Uh, basically, longitude and latitude values are inside location field as a list. And we have a population field and we have a state field, uh, which refers to one of the states in our data set. So that's how uh, the document is designed here. And now we are going to talk about the query. So basically <clears throat> in MongoDB query is a process of finding documents that satisfy certain criteria. So in the query, you are specifying uh, criteria, and based on that, the MongoDB will search certain documents from the collection. So query is used in many places in the MongoDB. So in the find operation, basically, when you read the documents from a collection, we will specify query inside the find function. And also for update operation, inside the update function, we will specify query here on the first part. And also in the delete operation, inside the remove function, we will specify a query so that we can delete documents that satisfy a certain criteria. So uh, the best way, again, to uh, get yourself familiarized with this kind of uh, uh, programming language and new tools is just by doing some hands-on exercise. So I prepared several examples here, and we can do it together to get ourselves familiarized with uh, MongoDB query. So the first one is this. So basically when you design a query, the query will follow this structure. So you specify a key, basically which is a field, and you specify a value. And the documents with the key with the matching value will be uh, selected as a result of the query, basically. Okay, so let me Sorry, I mean, uh, okay, so put this here and let's go to our MongoDB. Okay, here. So basically, uh, we are going to use city collection as our example. So uh, you can just right click on the test IA database and you can click open share and you can uh, type the code here. The first one is this. So let's just say that we want to retrieve the entire document. So we want to retrieve all the documents from our collection. Then you can simply specify nothing as a criteria. So inside this bracket, you don't specify any key, you don't specify any value, then everything will be selected. So basically in the relational database, we design query like this, select everything from a CD table. It's exactly the same. If you want to select everything from the CD collection, you can simply put open bracket, close bracket inside the find function. So for that, we can design like this, db.cd collection the find the function and here, open bracket, close bracket, and end of the find function. 
So if you perform this uh, uh, code by clicking this play icon on the top, then yeah, the results will be shown on the right part here, uh, the bottom part here, and it lists the entire document which are inside CD collection. So that's it. And the second one, so now we want to specify a certain uh, criteria, then we can use this. We can specify a condition with the key and value together. So let's just say that we want to find all the zip codes in the state NY. So basically in our document inside the collection, we had a state field which contain a state information. So if we want to uh, basically design something like this in MongoDB, then we can specify open bracket and state, which is the name of field. It should be N Y and close bracket. So we can put this criteria, this condition inside a find the function. So here, if I add a criteria state, should it be N Y. And if I perform this query, uh, basically all the documents which belong to state NY will be shown here as a result of this uh, uh, function, basically. So that's it. That's how you can specify a condition in the MongoDB, in the MongoDB query, basically. Also, you can specify multiple conditions If you just want to specify multiple condition, you can specify uh, one condition inside the uh, bracket and you can use the comma and you can specify the next condition. So basically, uh, in the relational database, we use the end uh, operator, right? So in the relational database, we use the end operator to specify multiple condition. And in MongoDB, you will simply use the comma to specify multiple condition. So if you want to design a query that find all zip codes uh, only when they are in the state NY and also when they are located in the city named Madison. The query you can design is something like this. So here, so here you can yeah, open bracket and you can specify the state. is NY and comma, and you can specify the city should be medicine like this. So if I type this in the MongoDB, so state is uh, NY, comma city is medicine. So you can do this and if you click the play icon on the top, the results will be shown. So one document will be retrieved and this document has a city field and the value is medicine, state field and the value is NY. Uh, like this. Oh, actually, yeah, I should have put it here, but um, See how I can. Uh, 
yeah, so it should be actually here, but yeah, you can put the same thing. So next, uh, next one is to specify the returning key. So currently, uh, what do you mean is this? Uh, let me see. So there are some questions here. Uh, do we have to open each shell for every single query? Uh, uh, you don't need to do that, so um, it's up to you. So um, if you put multiple query here, so for example, let's just say that I have the first query here and I have another query uh, with the only yeah, state and right? something like that. So if you have two query in one shell, and if you simply click the play icon, uh, there will be two results shown here. The first result here is for the first query, second result here is for the second query. So um, it's not necessarily it's not necessary that you have to open each shell for every single query. Uh, but if you have multiple query, whenever you perform, all the query will be uh, performed together. So that's it. How to put comments in NoSQL? So comments, uh, let me see the comments. Um, oh yeah, so using this uh, to, uh, what, what do you call this icon? To slash icon, yeah, something like that. So basically, if you wanna add a comment here, you can put to this uh, symbol and you can type comment. Yeah, it's very, yeah, basically it's JavaScript, so um, yeah, you can follow the same format basically. So yeah, the next one, yeah, the returning key is this. So, uh, so far when we design a query, when we use the find function and when we perform the code, uh, the entire document will be returned, right? So basically every document here returned, if you open it, it contains all the information, but you don't want that you want to make the returning results uh, smaller so that the size is smaller, so operation is faster. If you wanna do that, you can use the, you can specify the returning key. So let's just say, so for the returning key, uh, there you can follow this format. So in the find function, you can first specify, you can first specify the query and then you can specify the return rule. So in the return rule, if you specify a certain field, with the value one, that field will be included in the result. However, for ID field, ID field will be always uh, included in the result by default. So if you want to exclude ID field in a result, you can specify ID and you can specify zero as a value. So let's just say that uh, in this example, we want to find the population uh, of city medicine uh, and you only want to return population as your result, then you can specify this. So the first part is the same as earlier. So state and y and cd uh, medicine. So it's the same as earlier. However, now we want to specify the returning rule. So returning rule is this population we want to include this in the result. However, for ID field, which is zip code, uh, we don't want to include this in the result. So we put zero here. So that's the returning rule we can specify. So here, uh, if I go back to the MongoDB here, I can simply say uh, state NY city medicine. So that's the query. And then in the returning rule, uh, I may specify population to be included ID field to be excluded like this. So if I perform this code, here is the result. And I see that only population field is returned in the document basically. So that's the returning rule basically. And also uh, you can utilize a comparison operator for numerical value. Uh, just like uh, what we did in the relational database for the SQL part. So to specify the comparison rule, uh, you have to follow this format basically in the MongoDB. So you specify the field that you want to compare first. And then after colon, you specify comparison rule like this, basically inside the bracket. 
you specify comparison operator that you want to use and then value that uh, will, which will be used to compare. And comparison operator you can utilize are this kind of things, equality, not equal, greater than, less than, greater than or equal, less than or equal. So you can utilize this uh, comparison operator. So let's just say that we want to find all the zip codes with a population more than 100,000. Then for this one, we can specify query. The thing we are going to compare is a population. So population field should be compared. And the comparison rule here is that greater than 100,000. Like this. So you can specify this query like this. So let's try. So here, uh, basically the population field should be compared. And the rule is that it should be greater than 100,000 like this. So if I perform this query, the results are here. So there are only four zip codes, uh, which has population more than 100,000. So basically, uh, yeah, three zip codes are located in the state of NY, New York. And the last one is located in Chicago, Illinois, like this. So that's the comparison operator. And another comparison operator, which uh, can might be frequently used is uh, this in operator. Uh, so basically uh, you may specify multiple value. And if the document has uh, the matching value, one of them, then you wanna show the results, then you can use the in operator. So basically for this one, uh, you can specify the key, which will be compared and inside the uh, comparison rule, you can specify the in operator and you can specify the list of value. Then if this field has a value that match in one of these, uh, yeah, if the, if the document has a field uh, that match with one of these values in the list, then the results will be returned. So let's say that we want to find all the zip code with a population of 3,593 or 26,365. Then we can utilize the in operator. So for this one, we can specify population field inside the query first. And then in the comparison rule, we can use the in operator and we can specify a list of value. Uh, the list of value is 3,593 or 26,365, like this. So if we perform this query uh, in the, here, MongoDB, you can type this here. And if we click the play icon, the results will be here. So basically the first document has a population of 3,593, which is our first option. And the second document has a population of 26,365, which is our second option. So basically in operator uh, works like this. So whenever the population match with one of these variables we specify, it will be returned as a result. Another operator is a uh, uh, not in operator. So basically uh, you want to show the results when the field does not match with uh, the options you gave, then you can use not in operator. So let's say that we want to find all the zip codes in neither NY nor CA. So basically we want to see the results when uh, the state is not NY or CA, then we can design this using the not in operator. So state 
should be or should do not in and why ca like this okay so let's uh, try this in the mongodb so here uh, for the query we compare state field and for the comparison rule it should not in ny or ca like this so type this and if you click play icon then uh, a lot of results will be returned and if you open it then state will be something else other than ny or ca so it's ir ir something like that so that's the not in operator And yeah, if you remember in the relational database, we had other logical operator. So we had the end operator, we have or operator, we have not operator, something like that. So it's exactly the same in the uh, MongoDB. We have a doge operator also in MongoDB. So uh, we can use your end operator to list uh, multiple conditions. So earlier we simply used the comma to list multiple condition. Uh, we can also use end operator too. So simply you can specify end operator and you can put a list of queries as values. So this one, we designed this query earlier, find all the zip codes only when they are in the state NY and located in the city named medicine. We can design this query uh, utilizing end operator too. So in this case, we can start with the end operator and for value, uh, we can specify a list of value and the first list first element in the list is a query saying that state should be ny and the second element is that the city should be uh, medicine and then close yeah, the entire query like this. So we can design this and let's try this in the MongoDB. So basically, we start by using end operator and we specify that uh, state should be ny and cd should be medicine like this. And then when these two conditions, when, oh, so I missed the bracket here and bracket here. Okay. Okay. So basically when these two conditions are met, the results will be returned. So if I click the play icon, then here, yeah, one result will be returned, which is in medicine and why. There's also OR operator, so, uh, okay. So it's exactly the same as the OR operator we used in the relational database. So if we want to design a query that find the key values matching one of the multiple condition, we can use the OR operator. So let's just say that if we want to find the all the zip codes which are in Medicine NY or uh, Berkeley, California, then we can design this query using the OR operator. So we can start with the OR operator. And the first condition is uh, CD Medicine State. NY CD. The second second condition is this Berkeley State California and close and close like this. 
So I can type this uh, quickly. So basically, we start to query with the OR operator and make a list. First element is about city, medicine, uh, in state, and why for city. Berkeley in state C and finish the list and finish the query. If I perform this, yeah, multiple results will be returned. Basically, uh, if I look at each document, it's in Medicine NY or Berkeley CA like this. So that's the use of OR logical operator, basically. Also, there is not operator. So in this case, it's the same. Uh, so uh, we want to find the key value which is not matching operator expression, then we can use a not operator. So we specify the key which will be compared and specify not operator. And inside the bracket, we specify uh, operator expression. So something like this, if we want to find the all zip codes with a population not less than 100,000, then we can design this query utilizing not operator. So basically, population field should be compared. And the condition is uh, not. Not less than 100,000. So we use uh, less than 100,000. like this. So for this one, now uh, we can also design here in the MongoDB. So population should be compared and the operator, we use a not operator and inside the operator expression. So basically it should not less than 100,000 like this. Yeah, so that will be the that will be the query, and if I click the play icon here, then the results will be returned. So basically, there are four uh, documents, four zip codes, which has a population not less than hundred thousand. So basically, it's all more than hundred thousand, right? So we can see that the results are returned correctly. There is something you have to be careful when you use not operator actually here. So let me talk about it. So not operator in MongoDB is actually different from your, what you would uh, expect to happen. So for this question, uh, which I showed you in earlier slide, find all the zip codes with a population not less than 100,000. So what does it mean by not less than 100,000? So not less than means uh, basically it's the same as greater than or equal to, right? Basically, less than is uh, uh, this. So it's uh, not this, right? So it is the same as greater than or equal to. So that's what we would expect. So. Basically, these two queries, so one using greater than equal to, one using not less than, you would expect that these two queries will give the same result. However, let's try. Let's try whether these two actually give the same result in MongoDB. So uh, let me yeah, make this query into one line so that it's easier to see. So first, we have this query using not less than. And then let's add another query which is utilizing greater than or equal to. So GTE. Um, let's just see. Okay. So here. So if I perform these two query here, it's giving the same results, right? That's what you would expect. But what if we add a new data here, uh, which shows uh, on the last part of the slide, this one. 
So what if uh, we perform this code first to add a new document into CD collection? So we add this by db.cd dot insert and add a new document by with the ID nine 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 CD test and state. Uh, just not available, something like that. Okay, so if I do this, what would happen? So if I click the play button here, then yeah, it will show the three tabs. The first tab is for the insert operation. So inserted one record. So this new document is added correct, added into the CD collection. And the second is result from the uh, discovery greater than or equal to. So it shows four documents, which has a population more than 100,000. So it's the same as the previous case. And the last query, last result will be based on this last query, which we use not less than. It's showing four results, which is the same as the greater than equal to case. However, it shows one more result with a, a new document we just added, which doesn't have any population field. So what's happening is this, basically. So when we use this query here, uh, with a not less than here, uh, basically, what MongoDB is doing is that inside the collection, inside your uh, CD collection, you have multiple documents, right? And it will search the documents that satisfy with the less than first. So these documents will say that it has a population less than 100,000. So it selects this part first. And then we have not. So basically, the MongoDB will do inverse operation. So this will be removed from the research and the other parts will be selected, this one. And this will be returned as a result. So there is this new document we just added, which doesn't have any population information. So it doesn't have a population field. However, it will be included as a result because we did the inverse operation. That's what MongoDB does. So, that's just something you have to be careful when you use that operator basically in the MongoDB. So uh, once you have to ask a question about uh, when to use uh, uh, this list symbol and uh, uh, this bracket. Also, uh, I think uh, what you talk about is this, right? So uh, here, yeah, so here there is uh, this symbol right, this symbol, and also we have this symbol. So these two symbols are uh, shown quite regularly in my slide. So this is basically the list symbol. It's a list operator. So inside the list, when you specify multiple value, right, or multiple query, so multiple elements basically, then you use this list symbol. And this is basically the rule in MongoDB. So when you specify a certain rule, uh, you will use this symbol. Uh, in, uh, in other programming languages like Python, uh, they call this as a dictionary. So if you are familiar with other programming languages like Python, uh, this concept will be more easier to understand. Basically, uh, this is for list. So it specify multiple elements inside the list with a comma. Then we use this symbol. And this is a dictionary. So in the dictionary, basically, what we do is that inside here, you specify a key and value. So you will see that when this symbol is used, uh, there is a colon 
and there's a key and value like this. So that's how you can yeah understand which is able to use uh, in the MongoDB basically. So uh, uh, at first this might be complex, if, uh, but uh, with more exercise, uh, it becomes a habit and you get to more familiar by uh, coding uh, like this. Okay, oh yeah, so here, so how, how we can do, let's just say that, so in this case, the, uh, the document with the population field is uh, shown as a result. So if you want to exclude uh, if you want to check whether a certain document contains a certain field, uh, there's also operator for that in MongoDB. It's an exist operator, so we can utilize that. So if we use uh, exist true or false, so in, if you use true, basically it will check, uh, it will check whether that field exists. If you use a false value, it will check whether that field doesn't exist. So if we want to fix uh, this one, the second query to make sure that it gives the same result as the first query, then we can actually design like this. So um, here, here we have a population field and our rule was that it should not less than 100,000. So this was the first rule. And we can add one more rule here. So comma. And the second rule is this population field should exist. So true. So this will be our second rule. And close the bracket and close uh, the entire query here. So you can specify like this. So let's uh, try this. So let me delete this insert part. And here, oh, yeah, remove this too. So basically here I add a comma and add this exist operator and it should be true like this. So if I perform this query, yeah, now the last result, last document without population field is not returned as a result anymore because of this new rule we added here. So population field should exist. So that's a, another operator we, you may utilize in the MongoDB. So uh, in the next one, there's this exercise, but let me uh, just do it together so that we can save the time. So let's say that we want to find all the zip codes with the population between 80,000 and 82,000. And actually there are two ways to design this query. One by utilizing end operator and another without utilizing end operator. So uh, if you just uh, design this one, then you may design this query. So db dot, uh, let me actually make the screen bigger here. Yeah. db dot cd dot uh, find function. And here the population field should be compared. And the rule is that it should be greater than equal to 80,000. And the second rule is less than or equal to 82,000. And close bracket, close query, and close the function like this. So that's the first way, uh, basically without end operator. And the second way, uh, with end operator, we can design like this. The second way is that db, the cd collection, find the function. And here we can use the end operator and inside the uh, list, we can specify multiple elements. So here, multiple rules. The first rule is the population field 
should be greater than or equal to 80,000. Close the query. So that was the first rule. Uh, second rule is the population should be less than or equal to 82,000. And close the list. Or close the bracket. Close the function like this. So yeah, so basically, and these two uh, query statements written here will give you the same result. Uh, just uh, we use a different approach to design uh, yeah, the code for this question. So I skip trying this in the so I skip trying this in the um, MongoDB. You can try at home later. Uh, so there's one question. Can we use the in operator here? Um, now are you talking about this case for exercise one? So um, actually for this, no. Yeah, we cannot use the in operator. It's theoretically possible. Um, the population is an integer number, right? So theoretically, um, yeah, theoretically we can use uh, in operator and we can make a list of uh, 80,000, 80,001, something like that, right? Or up to 82,000, but it will be very long list, right? So theoretically it's possible, but uh, I would not recommend because uh, yeah, coding is uh, very inefficient in this case. Okay, yeah, but so but theoretically possible, yeah. Okay, um let me go to the next one. So next one is about the list. So uh, one of the data type you may have in MongoDB is the list data type. So we talked about this in the earlier uh, first part in the beginning. So there could be multiple different data type you may have in the MongoDB inside the document. And one of the data type is a list. So in this case, uh, let's uh, prepare uh, this uh, food collection with the three documents first in our uh, MongoDB before I explain about this. So let me go back to uh, MongoDB here. So let me delete everything and let me type this db.food insert. So I'm making food collection basically. And inside the food collection, I'm adding this document. So name Tom, first document is name Tom, uh, fruit. Uh, basically he has a three fruit, apple, banana, and peach. Like this. So let me copy this and put three more. Okay. So second person is Zane. So Zane has uh, apple and kiwi and orange. The third person is Bob. So Bob has cherry, banana, apple. So it's just for exercise. So, uh, so it's there are three documents. Uh, we are going to add in to food collection. So after type this, if I click play uh, button on the top, it will be added. So one record added, one record added, one record added. So three records are added. So if I right click on the local DB and if I click refresh, and now inside the test IA database, we have a food collection. So if I right click and view documents, I can see that uh, three documents are added correctly for Tom, Jane, and Bob, like this. So what will be the result of the following query? So if I perform uh, this query here, what will be the result? So I want to find uh, people who have a banana, basically. So that's what I want. So I can right click on the test IA uh, database and click open share. And here, let's type this query. Database, food collection. I want to find when a person has a fruit, banana, something like that. 
So it will be working correctly. So if we click play icon, yes, it works correctly. So it returns two people, Tom and Bob. And if you look at the fruit, they both has a banana, basically. So basically, the thing is this. So this is the field, right? So you specify field and you specify the value. Then this value will be searched over the list. So the MongoDB will find this value inside the list. So there's banana and there's banana. So it will return the results of Tom and Bob. So that's how it works. And let's just say that you want to find people who has both banana and apple. So you put a list of a banana and apple like this. Then whether it works, we can try. So here you provide a list of two elements, banana and apple here. And then if you click the play icon, nothing will be returned, even though Tom and Bob also has a banana and apple. So this doesn't work. The reason is this. If you specify only one element, it will be searched over the list. So this is fine. But if you specify a list of elements, then MongoDB will try to, try to find the exact match of this list. So currently everyone has three fruit. So there is no one who has only two fruit, right? So basically it will return nothing. So that's something you have to be careful about the list operation in MongoDB. So if you want to find the people who has a banana and apple together, then how should you do that? Then you have to utilize the end operator in this case. So basically uh, for this one, if you wanna make the correct code to find the people with the banana and apple, then you can design like this. So database, food collection, and find the operator. And here, the first condition will be, oh, so you specify end operator first. And then here, you specify a list of uh, uh, rules. The first rule will be fruit should be banana. Second rule is the fruit should be apple. like this. So basically, I specify two rule here, basically a list of uh, query, right? So I specify two list of query, and then I use the end operator. So basically, a uh, person should have a banana in the fruit list, and also apple in the fruit list, then the results will be returned. So if I try this really quick in the uh, MongoDB, it will be like this. So basically, instead of this, I can code db food uh, find and start with a bracket and end operator and the list of two rules, right? So first rule is first should be banana, banana, yeah. and the second rule should be uh, first should be apple and close the list, close the query, close the function. And then if I click play icon, yeah, the results will be returned correctly. Basically, Tom and Bob both has apple and banana and apple and banana like this. So that's how, yeah, the list operation will work in the MongoDB.